That was actor Dilip and four other accused appearing for police questioning on January 23rd. A lot has happened since I last did an episode of Let Me Explain on the Dilip case. But with so many fast-paced developments, I thought it's time to do another one. In this episode, we will deal with one theme. What does Dilip have to say? What are his statements in court? And what do they mean? Let me explain. Before I go into that, here's a quick look at all that's happened. A man named Balachandra Kumar, a filmmaker, made some serious allegations against Dilip. Based on this, the Kerala police asked for a further investigation into the sexual assault case. The crime branch also registered an FIR alleging that Dilip conspired to kill police officers. So what is Dilip's response to all of this? This 27-page document is his reply. This is also the time to remind you that if you want independent media organizations like the News Minute to report on cases without fear or favor, then do support us by becoming a member of the News Minute. We have two types of membership at the News Minute, starting at 1,179 rupees for a full year. To keep news free from influences, it's best the audience support news organizations. So in this affidavit, Dilip says that he did not deny knowing Balachandra Kumar. Dilip says he first met him in 2014, when Balachandra Kumar came to him with a script. The film was about a pickpocket, and Dilip's brother-in-law Suraj decided to produce it. Dilip says two scriptwriters, Y.V. Rajesh and Sachi, were asked to write the script. But due to differences with Balachandra Kumar, they both withdrew. In his affidavit, Dilip says that Balachandra Kumar wasn't able to deliver a proper script for the film by April 2021. Dilip says he cut all ties with the filmmaker and blocked his phone number due to his disgusting behaviour. Dilip's argument throughout has been that Balachandra Kumar has a grudge against him for dropping a bad project. Interestingly, director and screenwriter Rafi, who appeared before the crime branch on January 24th, said that the script for Pickpocket came to him for polishing and there was a good script but eventually, it was Balachandra Kumar who decided to drop it. Now, what the affidavit does reveal is that Dilip knew Balachandra Kumar for quite a few years. In fact, Dilip says that between 2014 and 2021, he and Suraj gave 10 lakh rupees to Balachandra Kumar, who said that he had financial needs and that he would return the money if he withdrew from the project. The next question is how well did Dilip know Balachandra Kumar? Balachandran in the Parayana Bhakti, Dilip in the Suhurthalla. Pradhana Mayan and Nushil Kantathe Sambodan. Pinna, Itrain Nalu, Balu, Indu Kund, Idu Parnilla, and all other. Uri Chodichina might a Kerala Sambodan in the Kundu. That was director M. A. Nishad on Reporter Life saying that Balchandra Kumar was not Dilip's friend. Dilip himself has repeated this in his court affidavit that Balchandra Kumar was not a close friend. There are, however, two things to point out here. First, when Dilip was jailed in 2017 for 80 days, he was allowed 80 visitors. One of them was Balachandra Kumar. Dilip in his affidavit says, Mr. Balachandra Kumar was one among the limited number of acquaintances who came forward offering unflinching support. He also rejects the claim by Balachandra Kumar that he was invited by Dilip and his family to meet him. Second, the whole case is based on a conversation that Dilip and his family allegedly had on November 15, 2017 at their house. Dilip has not denied that Balachandra Kumar was present. In fact, Dilip has said, and I quote, no normal person would record voice clips like this and that too in a meeting of persons known to each other. So the fact that they knew each other has been established, although they were not close friends. Why is this important? According to the Indian Evidence Act, a witness is any person who has witnessed the event and is competent to testify. So the layman argument that many Dilip supporters have been presenting on TV channels that Balachandra Kumar is a fake witness may not hold anymore. Now to the next big part of Dilip's statement to court and because of which a bishop has been dragged into the case. Dilip says that when he was in jail, Balachandra Kumar told his family that he had a close relationship with the bishop of Nayantikara. When Dilip got bail, Balachandra Kumar allegedly said that it was the bishop who helped secure his bail and that the bishop needed to be paid. Dilip claims that he never paid this money. But Balachandra Kumar has alleged that this is false. He says that he has charged to prove that Dilip's brother-in-law, Suraj, had asked him whether he knew the Nayantikara bishop or the Tiruvannandapuram bishop. He says he has submitted these chats to the police. In his affidavit, Dilip has already claimed that these so-called chats were fabricated. So who is telling the truth? Was the bishop's intervention really sought? 
and what was the disturbing evidence that the crime branch submitted to the High Court in a sealed cover? Was it related to this? All of this will unravel soon. Now to the last part of Dilip's affidavit to the court. Dilip alleges that Balchandra Kumar was trying to threaten and intimidate him. On April 9, 2021, Balachitra Kumar sent a WhatsApp message to Dilip claiming that he had something important to say about the case and that if no one responds by April 14th, he would ensure that Dilip's bail is cancelled. Dilip says he called Balachandra Kumar but he did not receive his call. He then sent his lawyer. In this meeting, Balachandra Kumar allegedly demanded money and a movie with Dilip. If not, he would make public details on how Dilip got bail. Dilip says that he chose to ignore such threats as he had nothing to fear regarding the false story of the bishop's intervention and blocked Balchandra Kumar. But there are a few gaps in this story. Dilip says that Balchandra Kumar, in his complaint, mentioned his message to Dilip on April 9th. But Dilip alleged that Balchandra Kumar suppressed details of their subsequent chats on April 10th, 11th, 12th and 13th because it would expose his fake story. But this may not be entirely accurate. In his complaint to the Chief Minister, Balchandra Kumar mentioned his WhatsApp chats with Dilip on April 10th and 11th. In an interview to the News Minute, Balchandra Kumar played an audio clip that Dilip had sent him during those days. I So are there more chats? Who is trying to hide what? This is what the police are trying to find out. Of course, it remains to be seen whether any of these revelations will help the police strengthen their case that Dilip hired Palsa Suni to sexually assault an actor. We will keep a close track of all of these developments. And like I mentioned earlier, do support independent media.